I cannot hear the piano now, Neil Fowler. Cannot hear it, okay. There I hear it. Now I hear the piano. Can you hear me? This is Charlotte. Yeah, hi. Uh, I saw uh, Amy Swearingen and uh, Kyle McClure yesterday. Oh. Therapist yesterday. And we're yeah. doing really well. Hi, Susan. Good. Hi, Bill. Hi, Martha. Hi. Susan, it looks like you're Family's on. It looks like it looks like what? Your family's on Zoom this morning. Yes, yes. Julie, Julie, Julie is my sister-in-law that is Chuck Neil's brother Chuck's wife. So they're on in Winchester. Well, they're in Iowa, I think. Yeah, actually. Oh, great. And Al Allison is our daughter in California, and Ellen Gray is our daughter in. Uh, she's visiting her in-laws in Texas. So oh, wonderful. It's sort of all over the place. Yeah. Where it's hot and where it's cooler. And... For those of you who don't know Carolyn, she lives in, is it Colorado, Carolyn? Yep, I live in Colorado. I live in, uh, north of Steamboat Springs. And she is our first member ever to join who doesn't even live here. She's a <laughs> sister to one of our members. And she is a full-fledged member, attends and participate, or attends via Zoom and participate. Great to yeah. have. Yeah. And I always like to give the weather report here. It's right now. It's about 72, but it's going to get up to about 90 today, which is breaking all records. Uh -huh. Glad to see everybody. Church, we hope that you feel the welcoming spirit of Jesus Christ as we gather together in his name. If you're a visitor this morning, I want you to know that I'm not the pastor of this church. Thank you. Our incredible Pastor Heather is beginning a well-earned vacation. I would ask that you keep her and her family in your prayers for safe travels 
and enjoy joyful family time together. As most of you know, she is dealing with some monumental stresses in her life and deserves this time to refresh and renew for the challenges ahead. I'm Neil Seip, just a regular member. Be merciful. Pastor Heather will return on August 11th. I'm going to selfishly ask for your prayers for us lay leaders who have foolishly volunteered to do this in her absence. And don't forget to include Neil Fowler, fearlessly taking on that complicated Zoom broadcast, and for Tammy Clifford for manning the audio board. Thank you, guys. We hope you forgive us for the uncomfortable moments that are inevitable when we amateurs try to do this as we try to lead us in a meaningful worship service. Today, there will be no children's sermon. Otherwise than that, uh, uh, everything will be as usual with our usual liturgy. Susan was going to do that, and she's a little under the weather yet. So we apologize for that. We are looking forward to having an old friend, Melissa Bowers, return to preach on the next two Sundays, which will be great having her back. And our own Neil Fowler will be preaching the first Sunday in August. Next Sunday, there will be a reception for Caleb, who is moving to Mississippi. We hope you can stay a few minutes after the service to say goodbye to Caleb and wish him well. And can I, uh, I'm sorry, you're not permitted. Go ahead, Susie. Take command. We have honored for Caleb, and so I'm going to start passing it around. It's going to pass it around and sign. This card for you, please. And then uh, we'll have the slide for the same. Our cell phone is at 3 next Sunday. Thank you for that, Susie. I was going to give you an opportunity later on, but we're used to you just kind of barging in like that. <laughs> Please check for other announcements that are in your bulletin. And are there any other announcements that you'd like to make? Yes. Spin pizza, right? Yes. Even even you young whippersnappers. Any other announcements? Thank you, Nancy. If there are none, I'd like to ask Wynn to come on up and lead us in the call to worship. Those who are able, please rise and join with me in the call of worship. She got the God has accomplished all things through Christ. Yeah. Let us give thanks to God. And let us worship God.
please be seated. Oh, we better be seated. All of us have sinned and fallen short. I'm of sure God's we're muted because otherwise we would be hearing Trusting ourselves. in God's love and Jesus Christ, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Then the people that are online know God, you call us to be your beloved children and to care for one another. Yet we fail to love others and ourselves. Help us and shame. We turn our hearts to you. Forgive us, then tenderly teach us to stand strong and courageous. You call us in your love. By the grace and mercy of Christ. Nothing you have done, nothing you will ever do is enough to separate you from the love of God. I declare in the name of the risen Christ that our sins are forgiven and our lives are made anew. Know in your heart today that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. been forgiven in Christ, we are called to forgive one another. May the peace of the Lord be with you at all times and also with you. Very good. I blew that line. <laughs> Please have a sign of peace and enjoy each other's company. Hi, Jepson. Hi. Jepson. You're on the road. Yes. Where are the Jepsons? <laughs> of course, now they're muted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello, Jepsons. Good job, man. Bill and Martha, what's the temperature going to be there today? Upper 90. Hot. Yeah, it's going to be 110 on Tuesday. Oh, my, my. That's, I hope you're going to just stay in. And eat. It's our son's birthday, and we're going out for dinner that night. So I, I, don't know, I don't think we're going to be eating outside. How are, how are the apps doing? How's they Um, and the, la the last thing it's the the update was that Nathan got through surgery just great and um, yeah, everyone's yeah and everyone's prayers continue to be with them and I see a Nathan I don't know if that's Nathan. online if it is hello apps and we love you a lot and and Ted and Mary, hello to you. Oh, here's from Nathan to everyone. I'm doing pretty good for what I've been through. No complications from the surgery. We'll know in three months if it was successful. Very good, very good. So glad you're doing well, Nathan. Please hug your, hug your family for us. And and your dog, Barry. <laughs> Hook up Barry. Keep Barry close. And Neil, thank you. You're doing a great job with with our Zoom. Thank you very much. But Neil, I don't think the, I, did you mute the gallery? Because we were getting other people talking while. And it looks like now we're all muted. Did you all? But that's OK, too.
And Ted and Mary, I hope you're keeping cool. I know it's been warm there also. It's going to be 90 something here today, which is breaking the records. You stay cool. Ellen, you stay well. Oh, there went Anna Luna. Hi, Julie. Okay, so um, you can hear the congregation, is that correct? No, now we can, but during yeah. the up, and we could, I, I think maybe we were picking up some of your mic and other, other mics that are live, because I think everyone on the screen here at the gallery had their... So try muting us all now. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell in the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by a chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by the, uh, on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place, he saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever you have more you send. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He, he said, the one who allowed, who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise.
Our second scripture reading this morning is again from the New Testament. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. Once again, listen to what Jesus has to say about something we are all guilty of. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you used, it will be used to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The title of the sermon is Six Lessons from an Old Guy. I didn't hear any laughter. <laughs> I've been around a long, long time, and I definitely have met the qualifications for being an old guy. Susan and I joined this church in 1975, and have learned so much from our church family over the ensuing half century as we've tried to figure out how Christ wants us to live in our lives. We still have lots to learn, but we have learned a few things and may have a perspective or two that may be something we should share with you young whippersnappers. When I was asked to preach a sermon while Pastor Heather was on vacation, I thought maybe this would be a good time to do just that. Thus the title, Six Lessons from an Old Guy. There will be a test. Number one, if you look for the best in people, you will find it. And if you look for the worst in people, you most certainly will find that too. I am convinced <clears throat> that generation after generation of my trumpet students achieved so much more than I would have ever dreamed possible because I cared and believed in them and convinced them to believe in themselves. Yes, lots of people ridicule others who look through rose-colored glasses but I have gone rather fond of mine. Because they were, I have seen firsthand how one's attitude and caring can change lives. Two, upward and onward. It's a mantra that I signed all my emails and letters, but now for the very first time, I'm going to share its secret meaning. What it means that in times of trouble, we have to find a way to pick yourself up off the ground first before you can move on in your life. When we moved here in 1974, our U-Haul truck was stolen, and we came to town with the shirts on our back. We decided we could mope around and self-pity for the rest of our lives, like my grandmother would have done, or pick ourselves up, treat this as a challenge, an adventure, and move on. What furniture, appliances, and a long list of household necessities could we find cheap in the next garage sale to help us get back on our feet? It was truly an adventure. And yes, that $5 wizard lawnmower lasted us for three seasons. What we learned is that we'll never get where we want to be by staying on the ground when life delivers a blow that knocks us off our feet. If and when life delivers a blow in your life, remember upward and onward. You can get through anything with prayer and God's guidance, but you gotta find a way to get up first. Three. Don't expect to find eternity on this earth. Several years ago on a family visit to South Dakota, <clears throat> I decided it would be neat to find my grandparents' grave and drive by their farm where I experienced so many wonderful visits as a kid. En route to the cemetery, I was shocked to find that their farm, the house, the barn, the outbuildings, the chicken coop, 
the orchard and even the driveway were gone. Nothing. Only cornfields as far as you could see. I was relieved to be able to find their graves in their tiny rural cemetery across a gravel road from where their little country church used to be. A small bell tower was erected there and it was a monument there to that tiny congregation that started that church and it was torn down in 1986. <clears throat> Thankfully, its cemetery was well maintained, but so lonely. Out in the middle of nowhere, a last remnant of a community of believers in that small rural township so many years ago. But my little, little adventure reaffirmed to me what our real legacy is. It's very simple, giving. Eventually, every place we've lived, everything we've accomplished, and all of our favorite toys and prized possessions will be gone. But what we give lives on and on and on. My grandparents lived a life of giving. Their tiny country church was the center of their life. They lived it. They taught Sunday school. Grandpa even preached on occasion. Prayers were a part of their daily life. And they tithed even when the crops failed. They raised a daughter, my mother, and gave her the core values they accomplished. Not by lecture, but by the way they lived their lives. They gave. My mother raised five children and passed it on. I raised two daughters and I tried to pass it on. <laughs> they are raising their children and passing it on and on and on. My grandchildren may never know how much the lives of their great, great grandparents, but whether they know it or not, a significant part of who they are and what they will become are because my grandparents gave. Number four, every day is a gift. Ralph Wall was a longtime member of this church and was my favorite trumpet student. He was in his 70s when he approached me after church on a Sunday in one of our early years here and told me he used to play trumpet in the 30s and wanted to get back to playing. Would I take him on as a student? I agreed, and I quickly discovered that no one enjoyed playing the trumpet more than Ralph did. <clears throat> a few years later, his first wife, Nadine, died soon after their 50th anniversary. But Ralph decided to continue living and playing his beloved trumpet. On his morning walks, he would throw Mildred Parmley's paper up on her front steps. In time, Mildred would invite him in for a croissant. Over time, they grew close. And in 1990, we had a huge church wedding right here in this sanctuary, where he was 80 years old. They were the happiest 80-year-old newlyweds I've ever seen in my life. Ralph prayed for 10 more good years, and he got nine. In those nine wonderful years, he would literally wake up every morning and pinch himself and thank God for another day. He didn't caught up, get caught up in the petty. He truly enjoyed every minute that he considered a gift from his God. I learned so much more from Ralph than he ever learned from me. I appreciate every minute. Reach out to your family. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> Count your blessings and live every minute as if it were your last. Because every new day is a gift and another day of opportunity. Five, my religion, here we go. Keep it simple, dummy. Study the Old and New Testaments, but realize that throughout history, man has and always will inject his beliefs 
and his society's traditions into his religion. Yes, even in the Bible. You can find and justify, and justify just about anything if you cherry pick the passages that support your beliefs and prejudices. We Christians have shown a propensity to add questionable things to our Christianity that really aren't close to what Jesus said and did. Think of the Inquisition, the Crusades, slavery, Christians in Germany who looked the other way when the Jews were abused and led away, or keeping women barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen in a subservient role where they belong. I heard with my own ears Jerry Falwell declare that if you're a Christian, you can't drink wine or believe in evolution. Still other encourage, others encourage their members to handle poisonous snakes to prove your faith. And then there's dancing. Oh, dancing. Years ago, right here in our congregation, Miss Lizzie Grover had the audacity to hold a dance in her home for young people. As a result, our session dealt with such anti-Christian behavior by kicking her out of the congregation. In other words, it's so easy to add stuff that Christ never said, or twist an obscure quote and use it as justification to contone doctrine that contradicts the vast majority of his teachings. Why do you think God sent his son to live among us? I believe he sent him to set the record straight and to demonstrate by example how he wants us to live, to show us in the most simple and direct terms. Therefore, this old man has come to the conclusion that we should make our decisions in life based only on what Jesus said and did in the New Testament, and don't add, twist, or omit anything. Keep it simple, dummy. His enemies were the religious authorities and the powerful. His friends were the scum of society. Tax collectors, smelly fishermen, beggars, prostitutes. He lived a life of love and showed us that if we truly love God, we loved ourselves, loved our neighbors, and did not judge, we would be living a life the way God wants us. With a caveat that if we really live that, then we will find ourselves doing certain things, just like Jesus shared in his many parables and demonstrated time and time again in his own life. For example, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus tells us that if we love our neighbor, just saying so doesn't cut it. Loving your neighbor means that you get off your hiney, you roll up your sleeve, and you do something. When others are hurting, you do something. There's no shortage of that in this world and in our community. Only 10 more pages left. Number six, God doesn't make junk. That's the theme of Marriage Encounter, which is a program for young couples that helps them learn how to truly communicate with each other. Susan and I attended this retreat many, many years ago, but that simple message, God doesn't make junk, has resonated with me these many, many years. If we follow Jesus' simple teachings, we are obligated to love all people, especially people that are different from us because God doesn't make junk. He created people with different skin color. He created people who have different religious and political beliefs than we do. And he also created people of different sexual orientations than us. 
God doesn't make junk. Love your neighbor and leave the judging to God. Live it. In closing, <clears throat> I'd like to share <clears throat> excuse me, some words that are much more eloquent than mine that may best define how we should be following Jesus in our lives. I came across this poem by Mother Teresa. I think she had the credentials for us to trust in her words from her poem named Anyway. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. People may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have. And it may never be enough. Give the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and your maker. It was never between you and them. Anyway. Amen. This is the part that I, terrifies me the most. Prayers of the people. Before we pray, are there joys or concerns you'd like to share in our prayers? My hearing isn't anywhere close to where it used to be. My wife continuously re reminds me of. So if you have something you'd like to share, please speak up so I can hear it. And if I blow it, I'll ask for your forgiveness. Later. Are there any prayers that you'd like to share with us?
Yes, Neil. This is from Carolyn. Sorry, I just passed it. Uh, come back to me, Neil. I'm sorry. I lost it. Okay. Go ahead. And our for our praying for our country. Yes. Other prayers. Again. Uh, this is from Carolyn. Uh, prayers for comfort and forgiveness for the families and friends of the Pennsylvania victims, all who put or found themselves in harm's way, the suspect, and for unity and peace for our nation and world. Prayers for the hurricane victims. Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania. Chief, Pennsylvania. Okay. In, oh, yes, yes. Again? This is one from Ellen Long. Sure. Prayers for Cheryl Craig. She broke her hip and has surgery tomorrow. Okay, next. For Cheryl Craig, who's uh, having yeah, surgery this tomorrow. Is, this is from Nathan. I would like to read it. Uh, thank you all for the cards and food. My surgery went well with no complications. I'm recovering. I'll know in three months if it was successful. Okay. Any other? Shonda? Yeah. I'm sorry. Is there for, uh, Tara and Amber who are traveling? Prayers for Tara and Amber who are traveling. Wisconsin. Yes. And the traveling guests and the crew. Yes. Others? Again? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is from Chandra, asking for prayer for a friend's daughter who just went into ICU and is intubated with bleeding esophagus. Chandra's friend's dog? Daughter. Daughter, okay. Is in ICU. Oh my goodness. Any more? Trip to Colorado Tuesday. Safe travels. Yes. Pray for the people who have gone home from Texas for the recovery. Who? People from Texas. Texas. In Texas? Yes. Okay. Don't see any others. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Christ, your Son. Speak to us this morning, Lord, as we try to seek you out amid all the turmoil in the world and in our lives. We know that when we focus on you, everything else seems so much less difficult and manageable. Dear Heavenly Father, give us the courage to stand up and condemn those who preach hatred and judgment against those who are different or may not agree with our views. Hatred and judgment are the exact opposite of what Christ taught and lived and inevitably leads to violence. Oh, how we love to hate and judge, O oh Lord. Both sides of the political spectrum are guilty and must be condemned by anyone who truly follows Christ, no matter what our political views are. Help us to recognize judgment and hatred in our lives, and to replace it with the love that you tried to teach us, as we pray for Donald Trump and Joe Biden and for our country. Thank you for our church family. Help us to work through our challenges by working together rejoicing in our diversity of ideas and styles. Help us to always look for the best in our Christian brothers and sisters to continue to truly trust 
and support each other, thus giving honor to our common calling to do your work. We pray for those listed in our prayer chain in the bulletin. Baby Milo, Margaret Schull, Michael Aldred, the people of Malawi, the people of Ukraine, of Palestine, and Israel. Victims of abuse, those seeking jobs, those who are deployed and their families, first responders, our homeless brothers and sisters, all God's creation, our country, and our church. Generous God, we pray for the gathered joys and concerns of this community of faith. We thank you for Nathan's successful surgery and pray for his continued healing and for his family. We pray for our country. We pray for all those who are dealing with disasters in Texas and Pennsylvania and throughout the country where there's unrest and terrible weather situations that are creating havoc. We pray for Cheryl Young, Sherry, Sherry Craig, who's having surgery. We pray for safe travels for the Jepsons, for Tara and Amber, and for those traveling to Colorado. We pray for Chandra's friend who has a daughter and I see you. And Lord, if I missed anything, forgive me. As we consider once again the gift of your son, for his dwelling among us and his ultimate sacrifice he made for our sins, we ask for the insight to really see through his example how to pursue your plan in our life. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May we never forget that all we are, all we have, and all that we hope to be are gifts from our God. I invite you to honor him with a sacrifice of thanksgiving as Mark presents a gift of music. Accept the fruit of our labor and the offering of our lives. Let us be a sacrifice of thanksgiving in union with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen.
Thank you for being here to worship. Now go forth from this place in peace to love and serve the Lord. And be blessed by the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. We're all still muted, but bye. Bye bye. Have a good week. Yes, you too, everybody. Good to see you all. Thanks good to for see joining you us. too. Great to see the family. Hi, Charlie Schroeder. Mm. Hope you're feeling better. Neil, sorry. Oh, good.